66 million years ago, a large asteroid hit the Earth. The effects of the impact caused a mass extinction and was also responsible for the demise of the dinosaurs. How is it possible to find out more about this event? How can we answer big scientific questions? Like how did the asteroid change the rocks at the impact site? And how did life recover after the impact? For this, we need to have a closer look at the rocks that witnessed the impact. On IODP Expedition 364, undertaken by ECORD, we drilled into the Trixilub crater, which was formed by the asteroid's impact. For this expedition in the Gulf of Mexico, the lift boat Myrtle was erected as an offshore platform 13 metres above sea level. From here, we drilled deeper than 1.3 kilometres into the sea floor, which is as deep as 12 football pitches are long. The further down we drill, the older the material gets comes out of the borehole as so-called cores. These cores recorded what the world looked like millions of years ago, and they can provide answers to the scientists' big questions. Each core has a length of over three meters. Once the core is on deck, it is dismantled from the core barrel and brought to the core bench. The core catcher is removed. This is a device that keeps material in the barrel while the core is being pulled out of the borehole. The curator rinses the drill mud from the inside of the plastic liner. The cores are too long and heavy to handle as a whole, so they are cut into sections of up to 1.5 meters. In the curation container, first the liner is cut into the right length. The sections are sealed with end caps. A blue cap marks the top and a white cap the bottom of the core. The curator notes the exact length of the sections and enters them into the database. To ensure the core's unique identification, the ID is written with a pen on the end caps, engraved on the liner, and added as a label. Directly upon coring, first samples are taken for biostratigraphy, trace metal studies, and for microbiology. Scientists prepare the microbiology samples for cell enumeration and anaerobic cultivation. Afterwards, the cores are brought to the next laboratory. We're in the visual core description lab, and uh, I've just received a new core from the curator. And uh, so I start looking at it, and I have to figure out what type of lithology we have here. And I can see it here, it's a granite, for example. Then I would start looking through it, trying to figure out where the Core damages, core fractures, I might be able to see them here, some open fractures, would note that down. And then I'd start looking at the actual uh, lithology, so I'd try and figure out if it's a normal granite, if I see any uh, damage in there, um, impact created fractures, uh, maybe impact melt or something, something that intruded into this uh, granite. So that's all stuff I would note, and then I'd uh, finish that up on my sheet, and then I'd type it into the database, and when I'm done with that, I bring it next door to the MSCL lab for it to cool down so that uh, the colleagues there can measure the physical properties. When the cores come out of the, the borehole, they become really hot. So when they come here after they have been curated, we let them sit in here in this room, which is had air conditioning for six hours. So the temperature of the core stabilizes uh, because also the temperature affects the petrophysics the properties of the rock. The first thing we do is to make a preliminary description if they have any cracks, and then we put them into the logger. We save the raw data, and the first part is the core thickness variation. Then we have the P wave and the, the amplitude and velocity. Then we have the density of the rock. We have the magnetic susceptibility of the rocks, the electrical resistivity, the velocity of the seismic waves in the rocks and the uh, natural gamma radiation of the rocks. Once the logging is, up, is done, we're going to take the cores to the river. They will be stored at a temperature of 4 degrees Celsius because, as we know, as the temperature lowers, the chemical, some chemical reactions, some bacterial uh, activity it slows down or sometimes it even stops. So that preserves the cores properly until they are transported to Bremen where we will examine them uh, in more detail. After the expedition, the cores are stored on a container ship and transported from Mexico to Germany. 
Only a few measurements were carried out offshore. For the detailed investigation, a large group of international scientists will meet at MARIM, the Centre for Marine Environmental Sciences at the University of Bremen, for the onshore science party. At MARIM, the cores are stored in the IODP Bremen Core Repository, waiting for scientists to arrive. This is the moment everyone has been waiting for. The splitting of the cores initiates all detailed investigation. The cores are cut into two halves, and for the first time they reveal secrets they have been keeping for as long as 66 million years. One half remains intact for the archive, the other half is for working procedures like taking samples. The archive half is brought to the laboratories for non-destructive measurements, for example scanning the surface of the cores. Line scans provide high resolution core pictures and other analyses offer information on physical properties like thermal conductivity and colour reflectance. The archive half is then brought to the description lab. Now that the cores are opened, scientists can describe them in detail. Minerals are identified, angles of cracks are determined, and everything is noted in detail on description sheets. The archive halves are then laid out so that all members of the onshore science party can have a last look at them before they are stored away. Then the sampling on the working half begins. During the visual core description, the scientists have noted exactly which parts of the core are interesting to sample for further analysis. The description team marks the samples on the core and gives instructions to the sampling team. Sample information is entered into a database and then it gets loud in the laboratory. Samples are drilled or cut out with a diamond saw, individually packed into small sample bags. Labels on them provide detailed information and display for whom the sample was taken. Afterwards, the working and the archive halves are put into D-tubes. A red cap marks the archive half and a black cap the working half. They are transported to the core repository. Here the cores are stored at a temperature of 4 degrees Celsius until someone requests to see, analyse or sample them again. For the samples, however, the journey has only just begun. Scientists will take the samples back home to analyse them in detail, in the hope of finding answers to their big questions. In a few years, perhaps we will understand the nature of this enormous asteroid impact, and even how life returned to Earth afterwards.